I know of no better aim of life than that of perishing in pursuit of the great and the impossible. The philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche is considered by many to be one of the most insightful yet dangerous thinkers in history. It is an opinion he certainly had of himself. In addition to desiring the revaluation of all values and proclaiming the death of God, Nietzsche also had an unwavering belief in man's ability to accomplish great tasks. As a relentless pursuer of the truth and a thinker strongly influenced by the physics of his day, I believe he can be seen as near akin to many scientists of today. In fact, the writings of the mathematical physicist Roger Boscovich played an extremely important role in much of Nietzsche's philosophy. Most notably, Nietzsche used Boscovich's concept of a physical force to develop one of his central ideas, the will to power, a somewhat nebulous term that describes the primary driving force underlying all human behavior and, in a sense, all natural events. In his book, The Gay Science, Nietzsche develops this idea further and illustrates what he called his most important philosophical discovery, the eternal recurrence of all things. He does this by posing what is arguably the most personally challenging thought experiment ever created. Imagine the following. What if a demon crept after thee into thy loneliest loneliness some day or night and said to thee, This life, as thou livest it at present, and hast lived it, thou must live it once more, and also innumerable times, and there will be nothing new in it, but every pain and every joy and every thought and every sigh, and all the unspeakably small and great in thy life must come to thee again, and all in the same series and sequence. And similarly, this spider and this moonlight among the trees, and I myself, the eternal sand glass of existence will ever be turned once more, and thou with it, thou speck of dust. Wouldst thou not throw thyself down and gnash thy teeth and curse the demon that so spake? Or hast thou once experienced a tremendous moment in which thou wouldst answer him? Thou art a god, and never did I hear aught more divine. If that thought acquired power over thee, as thou art, it would transform thee and perhaps crush thee. The question with regard to all and everything, dost thou want this once more and also for innumerable times, would lie as the heaviest burden upon thy activity. Or how wouldst thou have to become favorably inclined to thyself and to life, so as to long for nothing more ardently than for this last eternal sanctioning and sealing? In his autobiography, Ecce Homo, Nietzsche says that the idea of the eternal recurrence first came to him in August of 1881, as he was wandering through the woods alongside the lake of Silva Plana, 6,000 feet beyond man and time. After its first brief appearance in the gay science, the idea became one of the central concepts behind his magnum opus, Thus Spoke Zarathustra, of which Nietzsche wrote in his characteristic hubris, With it, I have given mankind the greatest present that has ever been made to it so far. The prophet-like main figure of Zarathustra overcomes his initial horror at the thought of eternal recurrence and eventually embraces it with supreme joy. For him, it is the ultimate truth to live by for anyone who desires to live life to the fullest. Interestingly, according to Lichtenberger, a notable Nietzschean scholar, Nietzsche was so enraptured by his idea of eternal recurrence that he planned to devote 10 years of his life to studying the natural sciences in order to provide a physical foundation for it. The plan never came to fruition though, and it remains unclear to what extent Nietzsche proposed this idea as a true physical reality or simply as an allegorical thought experiment. Nevertheless, Nietzsche's demon remains a powerful instrument to use in examining the kind of life one is living. Deep down, in all honesty, if the eternal recurrence were true, could you bear the possibility that all your pain and suffering, joys and loves, successes and failures, every single moment of your life will repeat again and again, exactly as it is, forever? Could you look this demon in the face and say yes to it all? If not, how must you live, that one day it may be so?